At number 10, Mariah Carey. Even though Mariah is still our skinny legend queen of the holidays, that doesn't just make her exempt from embarrassment. Mariah has had plenty of embarrassing moments over the years, but the majority of those cringe moments take place on stage when everyone is watching and some are filming the entire thing unfold. One of her cringiest moments happened back in 2016 during her New Year's Rocket Eve performance. During this live performance, Mariah had a bit of a malfunction and it messed up the entire show. All night, they had been teasing a huge performance from the singer as they rang in the new year, and at the very end of the night, she finally took the stage and didn't sing a single note. When she got out to perform and the music started playing, she just stood there, frozen, and she said that she couldn't hear anything in her earpiece. As the music played for the audience, Mariah's dancers kept on going in the background as it was rehearsed, and she even shared her microphone with the audience, getting them to sing for her, but nothing ever came out of her own mouth. A lot of people were left disappointed by this performance because they were hyped up and Mariah just didn't deliver and it got a lot of fans wondering why she didn't sing even though there was music playing. Some people think that this is proof that she's been lip syncing but regardless of that theory, it was still a super embarrassing moment. At number 9, Rob Kardashian. The Kardashians have certainly had their fair share of embarrassing moments. Many of them have been caught on camera while filming their reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, but many of their cringy moments also have on social media. Most Kardashian cringe comes from the famous sisters, but back in 2012, Rob Kardashian had an embarrassing moment of his own. The Kardashian brother took to Twitter because he had some pretty exciting news to share with his followers, but this message sort of fell flat and ended up with him taking a one-way trip to Cringe City. He sent out a tweet telling his fans that he was going to law school soon, saying, quote, going to law school very soon and so excited and can't wait. School just never ends. Hashtag University of Southern Cal, hashtag Trojans, hashtag fight on. No one had any reason to believe that this was fake because why would you lie about going to school? But soon the school itself had to come out and set the record straight for everyone. The school tweeted saying Rob hadn't even applied to USC law and they even tagged some big news outlets in their tweets so they could finally set the record straight. No one really knows what went on there, but it was really embarrassing. Now before I carry on with our list, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. At number eight, Doug Williams. Imagine getting up in front of an audience just to get absolutely roasted by someone. This isn't an uncommon thing as celebrity roasts are pretty popular, but it's different when you're not the one who's supposed to be getting roasted. This happened with comedian Doug Williams as he was invited to be part of a comedy roast and it was super embarrassing. Doug here was invited to be part of the lineup at Shaq's all-star comedy roast of football player Emmett Smith. He was part of a pretty good lineup of other comedians, so the pressure was really on to do well in front of his peers. That night, after being introduced by host Jamie Foxx, he started his set. After a few punchlines, Jamie started to chime in, interrupting Doug, and putting him in the hot seat rather than Emmett. Jamie started mocking Doug's jokes and punchlines and really just roasted him relentlessly. It was a lot to take in, especially for Doug who wasn't expecting the tables to be turned like that. That moment was not only incredibly embarrassing, but also pretty career altering and Doug just wasn't the same since. At number 7, Khloe Kardashian. Now we just talked about one Kardashian and like I said, they've all had their embarrassing moments so let's talk about a recent cringe moment from Khloe Kardashian. Recently, Khloe had an oh crap moment after an unedited photo of her was accidentally posted to social media. Now she and her sisters have had many embarrassing photo moments but this was seemingly a huge deal to Khloe because it hadn't been edited and she wasn't looking perfect. The post was quickly circulated on the internet Internet before it was finally taken down, and Chloe and her team have been trying to cover it all up since. Chloe takes her public image very seriously and says that she's insecure and embarrassed by that photo because of how she's portrayed. She also sees this unedited photo as pretty damaging because people always see her as perfect and straying from this could hurt her image. Now, I don't think that this photo is nearly as embarrassing as others that she's posted. In fact, I don't think it's embarrassing at all. The only cringe that I find here is the fact that she doesn't even post her own things because this was all done by one of her assistants. 
At number six, Steve Harvey. You can't take anything back when on live TV. When it's done, it's done, and no matter how badly you wish no one saw, chances are that thousands of people just witnessed your embarrassing moment. When I think of cringy live TV moments, I think of what happened to Steve Harvey back in 2015 during the Miss Universe competition, where he made one of the biggest mistakes in TV history. Steve was the host of the competition last year, and he was given the all-important task of reading off the name of the winner. Well, it was all coming down to the wire as the final vote was being read, and it was down to the last two contestants, Miss Columbia and Miss Philippines. There was a pause for dramatic effect, and Steve read off the name on the card, crowning Miss Columbia as the winner. There were cheers, but soon confusion set in. Just a few moments later, Steve shyly returned to the stage to announce that he had actually read the card wrong and that Miss Columbia was actually the runner-up. The embarrassment didn't stop there as they had to take the crown from Miss Columbia and then give it to Miss Philippines, the actual winner. The look on Steve's face in that moment said it all. He knew he was in big trouble and you could tell how embarrassed he was in that moment. It is one moment that he will probably never be able to live down. At number five, Robert Downey Jr. Here's a story that I haven't been able to get out of my head and it's oh so cringy and hilarious. Do you remember last year when there was a debate going on online where people were trying to determine who was Hollywood's worst Chris? Well, when it came down to it, a lot of people said that Guardians of the Galaxy actor Chris Pratt was the worst Chris. In a show of support for his MCU brethren, Robert Downey Jr. came in to defend Chris and he did so by posting a photo of him and Chris together. It was a nice wholesome moment until fans realized that this photo looked pretty familiar and then realized that there was something missing and then realized that the thing that was missing was in fact Tom Holland. RDJ was then promptly exposed for photoshopping Tom out of his photo. It was super embarrassing but also so funny. You just can't photoshop my darling Tom out of things. At number four, Tom Holland. But speaking of my darling Tom Holland, I think we all know where I'm going with this. Tom here is the king of leaking things on his social media and it's always so embarrassing to watch happen. Tom seems to have gotten the hang of his social media thing lately, but there was a time when everyone would search Tom's posts and Instagram stories for new information on upcoming MCU films just because he was so notorious for leaking sensitive information. There was a time where he accidentally revealed the title of the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel, Far From Home, and there's also that time when he showed off the unreleased posters for Avengers Infinity War, although a lot of people thought that one was actually staged. There was even a time when Tom's social media accidents were so common that when a rumor started going around that Tom had accidentally uploaded the entire Avengers Endgame film to Twitter, he actually believed it because it sounded like something he would do. He also needs to be chaperoned while doing interviews about MCU projects because of how many times he has almost spoiled things. Each accidental leak is super embarrassing, but we just can't be upset with him. At number three, Dakota Johnson. Fifty Shades actress Dakota Johnson is pretty used to having her body exposed to the public, but that doesn't mean that it isn't embarrassing when that sort of thing happens unexpectedly. She once had an embarrassing wardrobe malfunction while at an award show, and coincidentally it happened when she was accepting an award for her role in one of the Fifty Shades movies. At the People's Choice Awards in 2016, she went up on stage to accept her award, and when she went in to hug the presenter, one of the straps of her crop top snapped, and she had to do some quick thinking to hold up her top with one hand while taking her award in the other. Luckily, she got some help from the presenter and other people who were up on stage with her, but it was still slightly embarrassing. Luckily though, she was able to laugh it all off, as the first thing she said when she walked up to the microphone was, quote, it's not like no one here has already seen my boobs. Good one, Dakota. At number two, Niall Horan. Embarrassing moments happen when you least expect them. Obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be all that embarrassing. But for most people, if you have an embarrassing moment, there normally isn't anyone lurking trying to spot something cringy from you, but the same can't exactly be said for celebrities since the paparazzi is always around. Former One Direction member Niall Horan had one of his embarrassing moments captured by the paparazzi, and they turned this embarrassing moment into a headline. In in March of 2016, Niall was seen leaving a club in West Hollywood when paparazzi caught up with him. In an effort to catch a glimpse of the former boy band member, photographers followed him and ended up capturing a little more than they bargained for as they snapped photos of the singer peeing in public. Yep. 
there are pictures on the internet of Niall Horan peeing on a wall. He probably didn't expect to be caught doing what he was doing, but he did, and when his photos ended up in the tabloids the next day, it was cringe city for the singer. And finally, at number one, Tristram Shapiro. Here's a story to remind you to always be mindful of your surroundings when talking trash. I'm kidding, don't talk trash about people unless you want to be caught in an embarrassing moment like director Tristan Shapiro. The director was exposed after Euphoria star Lucas Gage posted about how a director was mocking his LA apartment during a Zoom audition. A clip of this embarrassing moment was shared on social media and it showed Tristram talking about how crappy Lucas's apartment was. The director didn't realize that he wasn't muted when making his comments and Lucas heard everything and called him out for it. There is no doubt that Tristram was embarrassed in that moment when he realized what happened. He did issue an apology for his remarks, but man, I am cringing just thinking about it. And at number 10, Cara Delevingne. Yes. You do, you, seem, you do seem a bit, a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just you. This interview was an absolute train wreck. And because it felt like the interviewers were constantly disrespecting Kara, she was in savage mode the whole time. The interview started off with her being referred to as Carla. Yikes. Kara was being interviewed to promote the new movie Paper Towns with Good Morning Sacramento. I think the interviewers didn't mean to offend her with their questions, but Kara is clearly very sarcastic, so when she tried to be sarcastic, they took it as being rude, and then Kara got irritated as the questions became even more rude, so it was just really a downward spiral. The worst part was when another guy hopped into the interview and flat out asked her why she can't be more enthusiastic. Then someone else chimed in, quote, You seem a little irritated. We'll let you go take a little nap and maybe get a Red Bull. Kara then decided to walk off in the middle of the interview and I really can't blame her. And at number nine, Tyra Banks. Okay, I'm gonna try to grab him, okay? <gasps> no, okay, what if ready? he jumps on me? No, 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 oh, hold on. Ready? I'm gonna hold him right on my lap. There, there we go. go. Oh my God, yeah. I don't like him either. I don't really like him either. Oh my God, he's scared. In 2007, during an episode of The Tyra Banks Show, Tyra ended up completely embarrassing herself after an animal expert brought out a porcupine. I'm not sure if producers knew that she hated porcupines or if it was a coincidence, but once the animal was brought out, Tyra decided to get away from it by sitting on top of her couch. But the couch ended up disconnecting, tipping over, and Tyra fell to the ground. Everyone had a good laugh while the guests helped her up. It seemed that the porcupine wasn't really a threat at all and it really didn't care that the whole debacle even happened. Happened. It was just sitting there eating its treats. Honestly, adorable. And at number eight, TJ Miller. This interview was incredibly embarrassing because TJ Miller was completely wasted during it. And you can tell Colbert was just trying to keep things under control the whole time. The interview starts off pretty uneasy with Miller talking about how Colbert is his wife's favorite comedian, which is, you know, a little awkward because Miller himself is obviously a comedian. Both of them had a laugh at that. But then TJ starts getting so annoying that Colbert genuinely looked mad. At one point, Miller is trying to make a joke about the Critics' Choice Awards, and while everyone is incredibly confused, he smashes an egg on his face, getting some egg on Colbert in the process. Miller finished off the segment by touching Colbert with his creepy skeleton hands. Definitely got secondhand embarrassment watching that. And at number seven, Danny DeVito. This one is pretty embarrassing, but more so adorable. This interview took place on The View, and it's hard not to crack a smile while watching it. The interview actually starts with DeVito admitting that he was hung over AF as he was out drinking with George Clooney the night before. Humble brag, I see. He also said he had seven lemoncellos right before the interview, and that they were finally catching up to him. He then starts talking about President Bush and making crazy facial expressions and noises to imitate him. Then when he literally looks like he's either gonna fall asleep or pass out, Rosie O'Donnell brought him over to cuddle. I'm sure he was embarrassed after this, but it just made me love him even more. And at number six, Vin Diesel. She's so beautiful. I'm in love. I'm in love with the interview. <laughs> this has to be my favorite interview moment of all time. And if you watch the H3 podcast, you've probably already seen it. The interview went down in 2016 at the Comic-Con Experience in Brazil. The actor sat down with Brazilian journalist Carol Morena to promote his upcoming film, XXX Return of Xander Cage. But I don't think he actually said anything about the film because the entire interview he was just talking about how the reporter looked. Basically, right in the beginning of the interview, he blurts out, quote, God, you're so beautiful. Then talking to the crew, he added, quote, my God, she's so beautiful, man. Am I right or wrong? Look at her. How am I supposed to do this interview? Look at this woman. She's so beautiful. Talk to me, baby. <laughs> and trust me, that's literally the tip of the iceberg. 
The reporter talked about the experience in a YouTube video where she said that she didn't know how to react to his advances, so she basically just laughed the whole time. This one is honestly impossible to watch without cringing. Halfway number five, Dakota Johnson. You all should know about this cultural reset by now because this interview kicked off Ellen DeGeneres' downfall. The interview kicks off normally with Ellen asking about Dakota's 30th birthday party. Ellen asked how the party was because she wasn't invited. Without a second thought, Johnson claps back, quote, actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. Then going on to say how she made a point to invite Ellen after Ellen gave her a ton of crap about not inviting her the year before. With Dakota adding, quote, ask everybody, ask Jonathan, your producer. Then Ellen's producer confirmed she was invited, with Ellen responding, quote, why didn't I go? Oh yeah, I had that thing. The party was probably in Malibu. That's too far for me to go. The interview managed to somehow get even worse when they started talking about Tig Notaro and Dakota said that Tig was her favorite comedian, making the interview even more uncomfortable to watch. And at number four, the Kardashians. This interview is so legendary, I'm sure you've seen it memed online. Everyone always asks what the Kardashians are famous for, and the common answer is that they're famous for being famous. But things got ugly when Barbara Walters asked the same question to the Kardashians. While Barbara Walters was interviewed the Kardashian family as a part of her 10 most fascinating people 2011 special, she just said what we were all thinking. While talking with the family, she asked, quote, you don't act, you don't sing, you don't dance, you don't have any, forgive me, any talent. <laughs> And the Kardashians definitely did not disagree that they don't have talents, but Chloe did kind of clap back, adding, quote, but we're still entertaining people. Awkward. And at number three, Madonna. David Letterman loves poking fun at his guests. And it seems that in this interview, Madonna tried to give him a taste of his own medicine, but it failed horribly. Their 1994 interview is one of the most controversial in history. Madonna also broke the record for saying the F word the most times on live TV, saying it 14 times. Letterman started off the interview with a jab, saying that Madonna had quote, slept with the biggest names in the entertainment industry. From there, it went downhill. Madonna came on stage with underwear behind her back and said quote, I'm only here because I couldn't escape this. Don't fly yourself. Then Letterman started repeatedly asking her to kiss a man in the audience, to which she responded asking why he's so obsessed with her love life. Madonna then tried to get Letterman to smell her underwear, which he did not. After tons of swearing, sexual innuendos, and going way over time, they finally got Madonna to walk off stage. In at number two, Wendy Williams. This moment was probably a little embarrassing for Wendy, but it was incredibly shocking and scary for those that were watching it. During a live broadcast of the Wendy Williams show, Wendy suddenly fainted to the ground. It was a Halloween episode, so Wendy was wearing a Statue of Liberty costume. She started to introduce the next guest, but heavily slurred her words. All of a sudden, she gets a terrified look in her eyes and starts stumbling, then suddenly she falls to the floor. Thankfully, after she was looked at, she was fine. She continued filming the show. The next day, she addressed it, saying, quote, I'm a 53-year-old middle-aged woman going through what middle-aged women go through, if you know what I mean. The costume got hot. All of a sudden, right before passing out, I felt like I was in the middle of a campfire. Also adding that anyone who was trying to take her purple chair was gonna have to wait a long time. And finally, number one, Jimmy Fallon. This one's a mix of embarrassing and endearing. While Nicole Kidman was on the Jimmy Fallon show, they were reminiscing about the last time that they met. When they were both going over their version of the night, Kidman ended up admitting that she had a huge crush on Fallon at the time. And she even asked their mutual friend to set them up on a date, which was the time that they actually met up. However, Fallon had no idea it was a setup. He thought it was just some sort of you know business conversation. So he was a perfect gentleman and never made a move. Throughout the entire interview, Jimmy is realizing that he had a shot of Nicole Kidman but totally blew it. Kidman even said she assumed that he was gay when he didn't make a move on her. At number 10, Carmen. For many up and coming performers, the idea is that you want to get yourself out in front of as many people as you can. Fame, after all, is based on talent and fan base, so if you can get as many people as possible engaging with your content, then you're golden. For many people, SNL can be a quick way to get to the top, but for others, it can ruin your career, even before it really got started. This sort of happened with the music duo Carmen in February of 2012. SNL can be a great testing ground for new artists, as new audiences are able to get a feel for this new talent. In 
January 2012, Lana Del Rey made her debut, and though she had some negative reviews, particularly those saying that she looked lost and distant on stage, she was able to turn these reviews into the image she holds today with her almost ethereal performances. But just a month later, when Carmen took the stage, their performance wasn't strong enough to catapult their career like it did for Lana. Carmen, though now disbanded and rebranded, was a music duo who got their start on YouTube by posting covers. Eventually, they got a large following by posting their renditions of songs like Party Rock Anthem and Super Bass, and they were able to release original songs with the help of their newly signed music label. The casting director over at SNL found them and invited them to perform on the show, and so they did. They performed their songs Broken Hearted and I Told You So, and after their performance, the reviews started pouring in, and it wasn't good. They faced a lot of criticism, saying that they failed to connect with the audience, and one critic said that their performance caused, quote, mild auditory distress. They were never really able to bounce back from this catastrophe of a performance, and so they eventually faded away, ending their careers. At number 9, Jenny Slate. Sometimes it takes a mistake to realize that you just aren't cut out for something. Mistakes are good for teaching us things, even though they totally suck in the moment. This was pretty much the case with comedian Jenny Slate during her brief time on SNL. Though she's pretty successful now, back in 2009 when she worked on SNL, she was still up and coming, looking to get her foot in the door. Things were starting to look up for Jenny when she landed a coveted role on SNL as a writer and performer, but things quickly took a nosedive as she messed up pretty big during her very first performance. In her first appearance as a member of the cast on the show, she was performing one of the sketches that she wrote called Biker Chit Chat. And in one of her lines, she accidentally switched up her words from being PG-13 to being a little more adult. Jenny ended up committing one of the greatest SNL sins, saying the F word. She caught herself saying it, but just brushed it off, pretending that no one else heard it, but unfortunately, people did hear it. This mistake sort of stuck with her for a while while she was working there, and though she wasn't fired for that specific reason, she did end up leaving at the end of the season. Though there was a misconception that the F-bomb was what really ended her SNL career, Jenny did say in an interview that, quote, that's not why I got fired, I just didn't belong there. I didn't do a good job. I didn't click. I had no idea how Lauren felt about me. All I know is it didn't work for me and I got fired. End quote. Her career eventually picked up, but it probably set her back a bit after being fired from SNL. Before we carry on with this cringe fest, why not leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far? And while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number eight, Ashley Simpson. After this infamous performance, Ashley Simpson's career was never the same. Ashley Simpson was getting her music career off the ground in the early 2000s, and in 2004, she was invited to perform a couple of songs on SNL. Like I've said before, this kind of opportunity can be a pretty big deal for some, but for others, it can be detrimental. Anything can happen during a live performance, and it could be good or catastrophic. Well, Ashley accepted the invitation to perform and geared up to perform her song's autobiography and Pieces of Me. Her performance of Pieces of Me went off without a hitch. Actually, it was very successful, and it got her audience pumped for another song. But this is where things turned sour. As the band got ready to start playing autobiography, a track started playing, but it wasn't what people were expecting to hear. Instead of hearing an instrumental for the correct song, they were instead listening to a pre-recorded vocal track of Ashley singing Pieces of Me. This accidental slip up revealed to everyone that she had been lip syncing the entire time. Ashley then froze for a second, then started doing a really weird and awkward dance before rushing off the stage. It was absolutely mortifying and very detrimental to her career, and this incident stuck with her for years. Later on down the line, Ashley spoke out about this incident, saying that it was partially her dad's fault that this happened, saying that he suggested that she make a backup track because she was having trouble with her voice and he didn't want her to strain it more. Now Ashley looks back on this incident saying that it certainly sucked but she's stronger for it and that's definitely a positive way of looking at things. At number 7, Sinead O'Connor. Probably one of the biggest SNL controversies to date comes from the drama surrounding Sinead O'Connor, the Catholic Church, and SNL. The show had its fair share of controversies and scandals in the past but I think few of them come close to this one that happened on October 3rd, 1992. On this episode, Sinead was asked to perform a few song from her newest album at the time, and she agreed, but there was a little fine print to accompany her appearance. She was asked to perform one of her original songs, but instead Sinead opted to sing Bob Marley's song War. The show executives thought this was a little bizarre, but they went along with it anyway because they thought that no matter what she sang, it would still be captivating. Well, it was captivating alright, but not for the reasons anyone was expecting. That night during her performance, Sinead did a very dramatic rendition of the song, even switching up some of the lyrics to change the context and meaning. 
cleaning. It was all starting to get a little tense until Sinead blew the doors off her performance by ending it with her ripping up a photo of Pope John Paul II saying, quote, fight the real enemy. She did all this as a means to raise awareness about allegations against the Catholic Church because she had personal experience with those who were allegedly hurt by members of the church and she wanted to fight against it. This stunt prompted a lot of anger towards both Sinead as well as the show. For days following her performance, NBC received thousands of angry calls condemning them for allowing something like this to happen. Other celebrities like Madonna and Joe Pesci also had some harsh words for Sinead. This stunt ruined her career after this and no one was quick to forget this scandal. At number 6, Charles Rocket. There was a time where SNL was in big trouble. From 1980 to 1981, SNL was facing a bout of struggle and negativity following a controversial position change. Because of this position change, most of the cast left, prompting people to have to hire a brand new cast. This new cast was untested and so for the 80 to 81 season, they were really just in the dirt. One incident made things even worse for everyone and that was when comedian Charles Rocket dropped an F-bomb during a skit. Though SNL skits can be controversial, this is one that absolutely is a no-go with those pesky F-bombs and so dropping one can be very bad for you and the studio. During the season's 11th episode, Charles was closing out the show and for whatever reason he decided to let an F-bomb fly. While doing his closing, Charles in reference to a skit that he performed earlier in the show said quote, it's the first time I've been in my life, I'd like to know who the F did it." End quote. If you watch the footage back, you can tell that this wasn't an accidental slip up on Charles's part and he actually meant to say it. This was the absolute last straw for the studio and they fired much of the cast and crew. At number 5, Kristen Stewart. I feel like hosting SNL would be one of the most stressful jobs to have. I mean yeah, it's good exposure and it can probably be a lot of fun being on the show, but there's also some pretty important rules that you need to follow and breaking one of them can be pretty bad. This happened to Kristen Stewart back in 2017 when she was hosting SNL one evening. In her opening segment, she was going off about how Donald Trump didn't like her and she even did a mini skit with two of the show's cast members. All was going pretty well until the end of that little segment because she accidentally dropped an F-bomb. As we all know by now, swearing on SNL is a big no-no and she probably didn't get into too much trouble since it was an accident, but you can certainly tell that she was embarrassed by her mistake. At number 4, Elvis Costello. Usually when someone tells you to do something, you do it. Within reason, of course. When it comes to SNL though, it is strongly advised that you follow the rules, not just for professionalism, but also because you have to follow the rules of the network. Well, Elvis Costello decided to throw all of that out the window when he went against the show's wishes and performed a song on the show that they had previously objected to. As he was one of the musical guests on the show that night, he was asked to perform the song Less Than Zero. Well, he started playing it, but just 15 seconds into the song, he stopped the music and switched gears going on to play the song Radio Radio, a song that was thrown out before the show. He completely went against the show's wishes and as a result of this rule breaking, he ended up getting banned from SNL. At number 3, Kanye West. Kanye West is no stranger to causing controversy. I think we all know this by now. He just can't help the fact that he's a very outspoken person. When Kanye West was on SNL back in 2018, he ended up getting booed off the stage because of the remarks that he was making about Donald Trump and his support for the former US president. He he came onto the show wearing a MAGA hat talking about how he fully supported Donald Trump and no one was having it. Even the host for that night, Adam Driver, started booing the rapper. His whole rant wasn't aired on TV, but a good chunk of it was, part of it including Kanye saying, quote, There's so many times I talk to like a white person about this and they say, how could you like Trump? He's racist. Well, uh, if I was concerned about racism, I would have moved out of America a long time ago. End quote. It's safe to say that he faced a lot of backlash after that night, but at this point, that doesn't even phase Kanye anymore. At number two, James Franco. Back in 2017, a mini stunt in a skit went wrong on SNL. James Franco was playing a part in a holiday themed skit where he was wrapping gifts, and his character cut his finger pretty badly and it was gushing blood. As part of the bit, he put his fake bloody finger in his mouth and his mouth filled up with fake blood. When Leslie Jones entered the scene, James spat out the fake blood and a lot of it ended up going into Leslie's mouth. It was so gross to watch and apparently she spent the entirety of the bit trying not to gag. But 
this was seriously hard to see. Because of this mishap, James Franco ended up facing a little backlash, as fans said that he shouldn't have spat the blood at Leslie in the first place. And finally, at number one, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody is a super successful actor, but after a scandal while hosting Saturday Night Live in 2003, his potential hosting career began and ended all in one night. When Adrian was hired to host SNL one evening, one of the tasks he was given that night was introducing the musical guest for the evening. Seems like a pretty simple enough job, but he still managed to mess it up. On the night that Adrian was hosting, the musical guest turned out to be Sean Paul, and Adrian saw this as a perfect opportunity to introduce Sean in a very interesting way to say the least. When it came down to announcing Sean's performance, Adrian came out dressed in fake dreadlocks, sporting a Jamaican accent. His bit was called out and was seen as offensive and uncalled for as he went off script to do this bit, which no one found funny in the slightest. Because this was such an epic and controversial fail, the actor was subsequently fired and banned from coming back on the show. He faced a lot of backlash that hurt his image for a while, but clearly he's bounced back since then. Moving on to number 9, we have Jennifer Lawrence falls down. No one wants an embarrassing moment to happen to them at one of the biggest award shows in the world, the Oscars. But Jen couldn't get out of this one, and even though it was embarrassing, she handled it like a total champ. It was at the Oscar Awards when she was called up on stage to receive the Best Actress Award for her role in Silver Lining Playbook. That's a moment that every artist probably dreams about and then plans out in their head, like what they're gonna say when they win the award. She could have rehearsed winning the award as many times as she wanted, but it still wasn't enough to prevent her fall from happening. That is right as she was walking up the stairs to the stage to get her award, she tripped and fell down. She ended up just staying on the stairs for a few moments, like just laughing to herself and covering her face, probably thinking about how she's going to react to that. After the award, she explained what happened and said that she remembers her stylist telling her to kick and walk, meaning kick the dress out while you walk, and she got distracted and forgot. The dress tucked under her feet and she went down. It was kind of game over from there. Sliding into number eight is the famous Chrissy Teigen meme. Now, if you ask me, becoming a meme wouldn't be all that bad. I think that really shows you made it. Well, Chrissy is the queen of memes after her face turned into one of the biggest ones in the entire world. Even without showing the picture, you probably already know which face I'm talking about because it's known as being the meme face now. No one else could laugh it off the way Chrissy did, who is always a good time when it comes to the internet and what people have to say about her. So why did she become a meme though? Well, during the 2015 Golden Globes, her husband, John Legend, was on stage performing one of his love songs that he wrote about her. Of course, the camera was on her so we could see her reaction to this performance, but it seemed to just catch her at a really bad moment. It was supposed to be this beautiful and romantic moment, but when the camera caught her, it looked like she'd smelled something like really bad and she looked absolutely disgusted. She later said that she was trying to hold back tears and that the the timing of the camera was just horrible. In spot number seven is John Travolta cannot say a name. Now, I'm no one to judge. I mispronounce names on this channel all the time. If you're a regular, then you know that. But this is a whole lot worse because this happened in front of a huge audience and the world at the 2014 Oscar Awards. He was in charge of introducing an artist's performance during the show, and Idina Menzel was going to perform her iconic song, Let It Go, from the Disney movie Frozen. But when he went to announce her performance, he said a totally random name, Adele Dazeem, and it left people super confused and slightly embarrassed. More than slightly. Good news is she went on to win the Oscar for Best Original Song. He apologized to her after the show, and the two of them went on to make a joke out of it at future Oscar award shows. So, it all worked out in the end. Making her way into number six is Nicole Kidman's clap. Hopefully we can all agree that one of the best parts of award shows is the camera capturing the reaction of the audience members throughout the show. We love to see how people react to other people winning or how the loser in the category reacts to their loss. But sometimes these cameras capture the strangest reactions and Nicole Kidman's is one of them. The actress started making really strange headlines after the 2017 Oscar Awards. The headlines were talking about how she looked like a seal clapping in the audience at the show. <laughs> Video clips showed her in the audience next to her husband Keith Urban and she stood up from her chair and clapped at those who were standing on stage receiving their awards. While that sounds like a normal and a very nice thing to do, she made it weird by clapping with her fingers 
fingers pointed to the sides away from each other and her hands weren't actually clapping. She was clapping like the air. This is what it looked like, no, no lie. Her fingers were like this and she was clapping like this. They weren't even touching, it was so weird. Nicole later explained herself though and said it was because she was wearing a huge ring that was not hers and she didn't want to damage it. <laughs> I get, that's smart, but like, weird. <laughs> Halfway through our list, at number five is Rami Malek takes a tumble. Definitely an embarrassing moment for someone who has been in the Hollywood game for a while now. His role as Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody put him on the map and he was nominated for numerous awards at the 2019 Oscar Awards. Good news is he did walk away with a few wins to his name. Bad news is he walked away with some bruises too. Both bruises on his body and probably a bruise on his ego as well because this was embarrassing. As he made his way to the stage to collect his award, it seemed like he was in a hurry back to his seat for some reason. He was rushing off the stage and totally fell off the stage somehow, tumbling to the ground. It's one thing to fall like on the Oscar stage, like trip, and it's another to fall off of it. I, why are you even walking that close to the edge? I don't know. In spot number four, we have Mariah Carey, a little too tipsy. I totally understand why some people would want to have a few drinks to shake the nerves before going up and giving a big acceptance speech. I would probably be wasted. But Mariah might have had one too many. At the 2010 Palm Springs International Film Festival, she won the award for breakthrough actress for her role in the movie Precious. I'm sure she had planned to win her award graciously, but that seemed more difficult than usual because she was a bit too tipsy. You could tell she had been drinking the minute she started talking. Talking. What made matters even worse was that the director of the movie was up on stage with her when she was trying to give her speech and he did not look very impressed. Mariah ended up addressing the fact that she was drunk during her speech and apologized saying that it was all the splashes of champagne she had on an empty stomach. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Taking over our third spot is Kanye West takes the mic. I don't really think I need to even explain this one. Just by saying that, I think you already know what incident I am talking about. But just for the fun of it, and because it's my job, let's take a trip down memory lane. Back at the 2009 MTV Awards, Kanye shocked the audience when he walked up on stage and interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech. Not only did he interrupt it, but he grabbed the mic from her hand and then gave his own speech instead. In his speech, he told everyone how he thinks Beyonce should have won the award for her music video, Put a Ring on It, saying that it was one of the best videos of all time. The whole audience was in complete shock, including Beyonce, who looks completely more throughout the entire thing. But don't worry, it was not her fault. She even made it up to Taylor by calling her up during her acceptance speech and letting Taylor finish her own speech. Beyonce was actually the one to apologize, even though she didn't do anything. Kanye never apologized which does not surprise me. Cruising into our number two spot is Madonna's big fall. This one is a little harder to watch than the other falls we've seen on this list. This was not just a little trip and fall. It was incredibly painful to watch for a few different reasons. Not only was it incredibly embarrassing, but it also looked incredibly painful. It was at the 2015 Brit Awards when she wore a cape during her performance, which tied around her neck. In her choreography, she was supposed to walk up the stairs and her dancers at the bottom were going to pull the cape off of her. But when they went to do that, the cape was tied too tight around her neck and it wouldn't come undone. So when they yanked the cape down the stairs, she came with it. It literally strangled her from behind and caused her to fly backwards down the stairs and crash to the ground. She ended up hitting her head on the ground and got whiplash from the fall. She was okay, no serious injuries, but she later admitted that she would never perform in a cape ever again. Earning our number one spot is Ryan Seacrest and his self-promotion. Now, a little bit of self-promotion is not a horrible thing, but there is a time and place to do it, and the Oscars probably is not that time. From one perspective, it's the perfect time, since the promotion would be huge. From another perspective, it's not very classy a little bit tacky. Ryan had no problem with it and used his hosting opportunity to his advantage. At the 2019 Oscar Awards, he was interviewing celebrities, asking them who they were wearing so they could shout out the designers. 
what they usually do. But Ryan went a bit overboard and used a lot of his screen time to plug his new suit line. It was so tacky that everyone talked about it after the show and Twitter was filled with jokes about it. Most people who watch the red carpet shows at the Oscars want to hear about the world's biggest designers, but Ryan wanted people to know that he had a new suit line. <laughs> he even went as far as telling the camera like where they could buy it from. It was, it was cringeworthy. 